Each week, we love to celebrate the Lord's table. Uh, There are some Bibles here at the front. Some men are going to hand out. If you don't have a Bible, we're going to look together at a text of Scripture. We'd love for you to see it for yourself on the pages of Scripture. If you don't own a Bible, we'd love for you to keep this as a gift from us. I want to turn your attention this morning to Romans chapter 10. And we will look at Romans 10 verse 3 as a meditation for our time with the Lord's table. In a few moments, we will take bread and some juice. These are memorials of Jesus' crushed body and spilled blood. They're symbols of his death, his death in our place to bring us to God. I want you to look at Romans 10.3 that gives us some picture of what it means to be declared right before a holy God. Paul the Apostle writes, For not knowing about God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. The Apostle Paul here speaks about his countrymen, particularly the Jews who were religious, Bible-believing, very familiar with traditions and history and scriptures, and yet they fell victim to the classic deception, the deception of the human heart that you have what it takes to please God. This is the natural bent of every human. This is the reason there are religions all over the world in every country and every language. People make up some way to try to establish a self-righteousness, to climb their way to pleasing God, to earn heaven. The idea that you could clean yourself up or do some good works or make some good deeds outweigh some bad deeds and in some way to merit your standing before God. And Paul describes such a perspective as ignorance. Look at verse 3. They do not know about God's righteousness. That is, they don't know what God's righteousness really is. They misapprehend the standard They believe that God's righteousness is something attainable, gettable, achievable. God's righteousness, oh, I could do that. God's standard, the the entrance to the pearly gates, I could get there. I could meet that standard. I could do what's required. I mean, I'm not as bad as the next guy. Paul says they do not know God's righteousness. What is God's righteousness? It is that which flows out of his perfect, beautiful, infinite being. It is flawless and perfect. You and I can never do that. We've already not done it. You've already committed crimes against God. And the thought that you could clean up your own mess is itself an offense and a crime against his holiness. This is why every human religion must fail. For it seeks only to compound unrighteousness with more unrighteousness by assuming that man's righteousness could reach God's righteousness. It can never. God's standard is the standard of his absolute perfection. And notice, not knowing about God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own. What did Paul's countrymen do? They thought by keeping rules, by keeping conformity to human traditions, by meeting the standards they'd set for themselves, they could merit God's love. They could merit God's favor. They could merit entrance into heaven. And notice verse 3 finishes with this sentence. They did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. What does it mean to subject yourself to the righteousness of God? It means to put yourself under the righteousness that God himself provides, the only kind of righteousness that can meet his standard of righteousness, 
God's righteousness is the standard of perfect rightness all the time, never any wrongness. And Paul opens this letter in Romans 1.16 with this stark statement. In the gospel is the righteousness of God for everyone who believes. Here's the deal. God has an absolute standard you and I can never meet. And God himself provides the meeting of that standard in the gospel. That word just means the good news. The good news that Jesus Christ, the righteous, came to the earth and died on a cross as a substitute to actually go between us and God as a mediator, to pay for our crimes before God by taking our sins on himself while dispensing God's righteousness to us, the criminals, as a free gift. His work was a work of substitution. And eternal life comes by grace, a free gift, unmerited favor, and it comes through faith. What must you do, sinner, to get the free gift of God's perfect righteousness, which meets the standard of his perfect righteousness, which allows us to be in his presence? Belief. You must believe. That is, you must turn away from every attempt to merit righteousness. You must turn away from your own ideas about your own worth, your own merit, your own ability, your own law-keeping, your own religion, your own cleanness. Reject all of that. Admit your sin and come to Christ as Savior. You come to Him by faith and you get as a free gift God's perfect righteousness. The only thing that could qualify you to meet his standard, to be in his presence. That is what we remember when we take communion. This bread and this juice, it, it's not magical. It, it doesn't do anything to give you grace. It's not some mechanical religious procedure. It's a tangible physical reminder that Jesus died in the place of sinners to bring us to God. And Jesus himself said, do this in remembrance of me. The men are gonna pass out those elements, the bread and the juice. You guys can come forward at this time and distribute those. Take those, hold those carefully. We're going to take the bread and the cup together. As you're holding those, you need to be mindful of a couple of things. There will be an awkward silence. That silence is designed for you to think about Christ. Communion is only for believers. You don't have to be a member here, but you have to be a member of Christ. You have to belong to him in order to partake this without taking judgment unto yourself. And so Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, each is to examine himself to look inward, to look at your own heart, test yourself to see if you're in the faith. It also means, believers, that you would examine your own heart for sins that you have not confessed, to bring these before the Lord, to confess them to him and to rejoice in the forgiveness that has been purchased for you by the blood of Christ. So take a few moments and pray. Take a few moments and remember what Christ has done. And then when those are distributed, we'll take them together.